Hi guys, this is Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today I'm making this beautiful card using the Botanical Crest set from Spellbinders. So the Glimmer Kit that I'm using for this month, this is the Glimmer Kit for December 2021 from Spellbinders, is the Botanical Crest, and this is just lovely. We have a wreath here that I think could be used for pretty much any um, any season, any kind of occasion, um, depending on what color of foil you decided to use. And we've got um, we've got dies to be able to cut it out with or without cutting out the center, so it's entirely up to you. We've got a couple of sentiments. One is happy birthday, and the other one says, I have to take it off to read it again. I did catch it a minute ago, but now I'm trying to remember what it says. Okay, that's because I had it upside down. Wishing you a year of magical moments. So that could be Christmas, New Year's, birthday, anniversary could be basically be for any occasion that happens basically annually so I'm going to be playing with this and I've already cut out a few off card panels and I'm heating up my Gemini foil press so we can go ahead and foil a pretty wreath on the top of this as always we've got a roll of foil to go with the kit and that is this month it is in the color blush that is kind of a, a pinkish goldish to me, it looks like rose gold, but um, not 100% sure. And I'm just using my quick cutter to cut that foil. I also just got in, have not tried it yet, the um, best ever craft tape that is supposed to work fabulously when you're working with foil. So uh, this is gonna be my first time trying this one out. So let's see how it does. As always, I'm having trouble getting it to come up on the roll. So I think what I want to do down here at the bottom of the, or at this corner, actually in the three different corners, it is kind of in a crest shape now that I look at it closer. So we've got a point here and then two to the sides. So if I wanted to use it straight on the card, no cutting out, nothing like that, I'd want to try to keep those edges basically straight. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be doing that or not, but we will give this one a shot. So I think that is about positioned in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and just slide my foil underneath that and leave that hinge on there. And I'm pulling it up just a touch so I can try to make sure that I get the entire die, I mean the entire plate, because that is one of the things I've had some errors on. I sometimes leave off a little bit of that foil plate because I don't get my foil quite as high up as I need, and that looks like it's about right. I'll go ahead and I think I'm going to tape it also to the sides. And it has heated up enough, so I'm going to go ahead and get that all ready to go. Since this one is a, a largish plate, I'm going to put that in for about 20 seconds. Actually, I just remembered something else I was going to do with this. I'm going to do that first. Because I want to also go ahead and use one of the sentiments. I think I want to go ahead and put that in. That way, I don't waste any of this card in the center. So let's see if I can get this pretty much straight. That looks about straight. Okay, and I'm gonna add another piece of tape to try to hold that one in place too, a couple pieces of tape. Okay, now I'm gonna add this to my press. And what you wanna do is make sure that you do the plate side down towards the heat. And then I'll run that, I'll go ahead and set the timer for 20 seconds. Okay, and now I'm going to run this through my Gemini Junior. And this is my first time trying this specific plate, so I have not seen how it's going to look before. I'm kind of guessing based on what I'm seeing, so let's see how it did. And when you're using a foil press and any, um, any foils that are not made by Crafter's Companion, you do need to make sure you do not plug that back in immediately after using it because you can warp your plates, and I have done that. I had to replace my last plate. Oh my goodness! Will you look at that? Okay, I am going to adjust the 
the camera a little bit because I still have a little bit of um, an exposure issue. So let me lower that just a touch. Okay, so that looks a little better, but look at how lovely that is. And what I think I'm going to do with this one, and it looks like it lined up just perfectly there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to die cut the, um, the crest out, the entire crest out, and put it on another... Put it on another piece of cardstock, maybe some patterned paper, and then um, this dot, this set also comes with some little flowers. So it's got a flower die, so I think I'm going to add some flowers to that too. And one thing with the Spellbinders dies, they do cut pretty close to the image. So I'm going to be real careful to try to get this lined up as best I can without going over any of that lovely foiling. Okay, so I'm going to tape it at the top and at the bottom. Oh, that is so pretty. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those little flowers out of the spare, the excess of that white cardstock, and just color those up. Um, I'm using a couple of Spectrum Noir markers, and these are the CR, this is CR6 and CR3. So I think I'm going to just go over these with those two colors. The CR3 is really, really light. And then I can put a little of the CR six yeah CR6 kind of in the middle and just flick it out a little bit and this is kind of a springish color card today and I just picked out a piece of pink patterned paper from in my stash to try out using with this. And let's see what those look like. I may change my mind if I don't like <laughs> the flowers on there. So now I just need to adhere all those little, little flowers down. I did cut out quite a few. Each run of the die cuts out six of them. So I think it was like 18. So I'm gonna have some extras. And I probably went a little bit overboard, but I don't want to add so many that you can't see the foil anymore. This, I think, is just so pretty, and it's a, a fun early springtime card. And I think this would do really well as, um, like, even a birthday card, you know? So I think I'm going to add a couple more of my, my little blossoms around the sentiment because I just think that would look pretty. Let's see where I want to do that. Okay, so that looks just adorable. I'm loving it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to adhere that to the front of this card panel, get everything mounted up onto a card base, and I think I may... I'm going to use a marker to darken the edges of my pattern paper as well. And this is a trial and error thing. I don't really do this a lot, but I do want that little bit of color there without adding a lot of bulk to my card. So try to line that up as even as I can to give just that little bit of a border. And to make it faster so that hopefully I don't shift the ruler at all, I'm going to use the wide tip. Okay, so that turned out nice. Okay, and then just try to add the same thing on the other three sides. Okay, and I think that turned out pretty good.
and because I absolutely love my little crystal gems from Hobby Lobby, I'm going to add a scattering of those around my wreath as well. Didn't this just turn out so lovely? Oh my goodness, I absolutely love this. And I think this would be perfect for, actually it could be a wedding card or it could be an anniversary card or it could be a birthday card. This is just absolutely lovely and I am just loving I Now I don't want to let it get out of my sight. It is so pretty. So anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me for this card video today. If you like what you see here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video so that YouTube knows that you like my content and I really do appreciate that. Um, also, here is another video that I know that you're going to enjoy. Thank you so much for join dropping in with me today and remember, if I can make it, you can too. Have a great day.